Today's video is about a favorite topic of mine, how to try to keep your kidney transplant for life or for as long as possible and be as healthy as you can. It's my favorite topic if you're new here because I have a kidney transplant, okay, coming up on 19 years very shortly and it was never supposed to last very long. They only gave me seven years. I had delayed graft function and that's what put me in this field and that's why I love these videos and I love this topic because I apply these things to myself. So let's get into it. If you got a kidney transplant, hopefully it's functioning really well. You're doing really good. And there's a couple additional things that you can do. So make sure to check out our other videos. So our first piece of research comes from the BMC Nephrology Journal. It was published June 17th, elevated parathyroid hormone one year after kidney transplantation is an independent risk factor for graft loss without hypercalcemia. So parathyroid hormone, okay, it's a hormone that regulates your calcium levels and it's often elevated in kidney disease. And sometimes your calcium can also become uh, out of range, out of balance, you know, because of advanced kidney disease. So what they were looking at here is they found people with kidney transplants who had an elevated parathyroid hormone, so PTH, that's what you'll see it on the blood test. And when that was elevated, and even though the calcium was normal, it was a risk factor so for losing your, your kidney transplant. So they looked at people, and at the end of five years, they looked at people that had that elevated parathyroid hormone, but normal calcium, which happens in a lot of kidney transplants. They, ha they lost their transplants. A very higher percentage had kidney failure with their transplants. So what you want to do is make sure on your blood test, you're getting that PTH test. Now, I can tell you, I just went to my um, transplant nephrologist, one of them, not long ago, and she wasn't concerned that my PTH was a little bit elevated. Okay, but I know from lots of other research that you want to get that down, especially here. I'm actually going to show her this piece of research and see what she says. Um, but you want to get it down. It's better for you. Okay, you, you can get it down if you have a high PTH. Sometimes you can get it down with D3 or you might need a medication. You might need a more metabolically active form of vitamin D. So first get it tested and then address it. Okay, if your doctor doesn't think it's important, just go to another one. Go to another nephrologist. You'll find one that will and give you the medications you need. So that's one, uh, one piece of research we have. We have another piece of research here from the um, Elsevier. Okay, so this was published in an uh, article in Press. So this was called Prebiotic Supplementation in Kidney Transplant Recipients for Preventing Infections and Gastrointestinal Upset. A randomized controlled feasibility study. So it was a small study. This is published in, um, by a publisher of medical texts, medical textbooks, so that's where it's from. What they did were people that were getting transplants before and during, so before they had it and when they got it and afterwards, they gave them green banana resistant starch. So you can find this powder online. And this is a prebiotic. And what they found was by giving this prebiotic, it helped reduce the infection rate that people get after transplants, uh, as well as reduce the side effects, the GI side effects, the, the stomach, the digestive side effects, okay, gastrointestinal, because you will have a lot of those after a transplant. I've been dealing with them for years, and the only way I got my gut much better is by taking prebiotics, by taking probiotics. So anybody with a transplant, whether you got it years ago, you're just getting it, you're scheduled, you really want to get some prebiotics and probiotics in. Just tremendous amounts of benefit. We have lots of other videos where we discuss that. But something you want for your renal transplant. All right, so uh, last piece of information we have here is from the Journal of Heart and Lung Transplantation, Volume 37, Issue 9, September 2018. Uh, a little bit um, older piece of research, but it's important because it talks about transplant. So an intact microbiota. Microbiota is your, your gut environment, okay? All the good bacteria, having enough of them, proper ratios, balance. So that's the microbiota, is required for the gastrointestinal toxicity of the immunosuppressant mycophenolate mofetil. So that's an anti-rejection medication. I take it and most people with transplants will take it. It's considered a very good anti-rejection drug, but it has a lot of GI side effects. So when your gut, okay, your gut is working well, you got those prebiotics, those probiotics, 
eating fiber, getting supplemental fiber, also that's a prebiotic. It allows the drug to be metabolized properly. So the toxic part of the drug is metabolized, broken down, excreted properly, meaning you're not gonna have side effects. But if you don't have a good gut, then you're gonna have more of the toxic side effects, the GI problems uh, that come with the medication. And I can tell you, I had, a, I had every GI problem under the sun after my transplant and before. And the only thing that got me better where I have minimal amounts of GI problems now with the transplant, prebiotics and probiotics. You need them, take them, super healthy for you. Check out our other videos about what you can do for your transplant to allow it to last as long as possible. So thanks for watching everybody into your best kidney health.